Our next guest says that the Fed will hold rates steady once again at its next policy meeting because they just don't know what to do. Joining us right now is Kamal Sri Kumar, who is president of Sri Kumar Global Strategies. And, and Sri, let, let's talk about this. You, you think they don't know what to do? Yeah, if you look at the latest minutes, uh, Becky, which came out last Tuesday about the October 31st, November 1st meeting, they gave you enough reasons why they should hike interest rates because inflation could rise, pick up again, in which case they would tighten. They also told you that if, in fact, there were signs of weakness, there were delinquencies which were increasing, banking problems were increasing, in which case they may cut rates. So in other, other words, they gave you no guidance at all. And I think the reason that is happening is because there is no structure to monetary policy. If you are doing uh, your decision meeting by meeting, as Chairman Powell has said repeatedly, then you don't have a path. And if you don't have a path, you're going to be confused yourself and cause confusion also in the market. Maybe that's not a bad thing to do at a point of inflection, though. I mean, it, yeah, it, you, you're, you've realized you're going to stop raising. Does that mean you're going to cut? Not necessarily. Maybe you just hold pat and see. That's a great question. But now standing pat is not an alternative to not knowing what to do. So maybe you should be increasing, maybe you should be cutting, but they are saying they are going to stand pat. Mm -hmm. And as far as the point of inflection is concerned, if they had a structured policy, the markets will be able to anticipate that point of inflation, inflection. They will realize that that is coming and therefore adjust to it. Right now, because of the uncertainty, the market is unable to adjust, which is why in October you saw the 10-year bond yield shoot up, November plunge, and then you could have more of these cycles in the so coming... A lot of volatility. A lot well, of volatility in the market, yeah. which is unhelpful. Is there any reason to think that a, like a rules-based system would be better than using human sort of... Uh, gut feeling about what they're doing. I mean, I, do you you say they don't know what to do? Do you definitively know what to do? And are you 100% sure you'd be right if you were in charge as to what to do? Would it be better? Think of think of a doctor. Do you want a doctor who just? It, it, I mean, it is medicine is definitely an art, not a science. There are things where if you just use rules based and just I'm going to do this and just go, you know, headlong into something that. You follow A, B, C, D, and you're not a doctor that says, well, wait a minute. Maybe this is not... I mean, I, I think it's rough. I think it's difficult. It's a it, difficult process, Joe. Do you think it'd be any better? Than, I think it will be better. You, I, would you know... Or you think a rules-based... Rules-based policy be better, would be better. That people would know. Uh, they you might know. be wrong, but they know that you're... Exactly right. You, you're correct. But then again, in terms of being right or wrong, I'm a follower of my professor from the PhD committee, John Taylor, who's now at Stanford. Well, he's the, the guy. Yeah, and Taylor rule. The Taylor rule essentially says you put in a growth rate which is higher or lower than what you desire, inflation which is higher or lower than what you desire. And there is a formula. And that formula is known to the whole world. So why don't they do it then? I, there is a great reason. It's a Fed is a bureaucracy. That means they don't have jobs. You can have a computer do the work. You can all go home. And in fact, I have suggested we pay them a higher salary not to come to work. Because then you will have more certainty in the market, more clarity, and you will not have this confusion. You, you couldn't have uh, the person sitting in the, uh, in the White House telling them what to do either. Not that President Biden's doing that, but President Trump did. They all do. They all, they try. all do. They all they, try to massage. They cannot them. do that either. Especially in an election year. They... Yeah, keep in mind that John Taylor was one of the candidates interviewed for the Fed chairman in the Trump administration. So, again, uh, that kind of a policy would not he wouldn't have been lasted. He wouldn't have been lasted very long with right. Trump, I know. Exactly. Think. But you ask the question, is it good for the market, Joe? And here are all the reasons why it could be. And if they are wrong... But is it good for the economy? <clears throat> it is good for More the broadly. economy because if you bring an element of certainty, if you reduce the risk, you are actually improving it. And again, going back to forward guidance, which was, which was again championed by ben Bernanke, and he explained it in 2020 as to what it is, it allows you to have a lower interest rate than otherwise, faster growth rate than otherwise, and more capital investment. And I, I guess it does prevent people from doing some of the stupid things they do when they assume that zero interest rates are going to last forever. Precisely. You're, you're worried about the potential 
uh, on a couple of fronts. One of them is that we're going to wake up with a crisis someday that's worse than what we saw back in the spring. What makes you think that? Uh, because the world is very uncertain on the geopolitical side. And I think domestically, in terms of financial situation, I see a problem, rising problem with the banks. Report after report by various Federal Reserve banks put it out. The latest one by Kansas City essentially points to $550 billion of troubled loans. And they are going to keep increasing. At some point, it breaks. And the problem is, and the, so when I say I wake up and find out that there is a real crisis, I don't know whether it is this morning or a morning three months from now. And that's the reason why you're operating perennially in a cloud of uncertainty. That, that's not your base case. It's, it's just something you worry about? My base case is something breaking. Really? Yeah. My base case is not anything specific breaking. It could be the commercial real estate issue. It can have pension funds which suffer huge losses, similar to what happened in the United Kingdom in September, October 2022. Uh, it can be a credit crunch. It can be a banking crisis bigger than what we had in March. All of those, but any one of them is my base case. Th that base case is in the next three months, in the next year? Next three months. Your base case is something breaks in the next three months? In the next three, three months. months, because I think the uncertainty is coming to a point, and as you said, some people think it's a point of inflection. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see a decisive moment come within the next three months. Wow. Um, okay, that's a little scarier than, than, than I thought you were anticipating with things. As a result, what do you do? Uh, as a result, what as do you investor? do? I think I would say, once again, Joe asked the question about a rules-based policy. If it's never too late to adopt it, if you say these are the ways in which we are going to do the policy, implement it, Fed reduces the uncertainty in the market. I, I'm sorry, as an investor, what do you do? Oh, as an investor. As an investor, clearly, what this means to me is that long-dated fixed income, high-grade fixed income, continues to remain a big buy because of the fact that these uncertainties make for a capital gain for you in long-dated fixed income, and they are not positive for equities.